Okay, we're recording here. I'm gonna show I'm gonna show my kids all about tides. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is go over the classwork from today, November 15th. Um, so the first question, a solar eclipse might occur when the moon is at location C is the answer. Okay, so when the moon would be covering up the sun basically. When you're looking from Earth at the sun, which you shouldn't put your eyes look directly at the sun obviously. Um, but in any case, uh, when the moon blocks out the sun, that would be uh, position C. Okay, so number two, the which moon, uh, no, which motion is responsible for the changing appearance of the moon in these slides here? And the answer would be choice one, the moon moves into the shadow of Earth. Okay, so that's Earth's shadow being cast on the moon there. Um, let's see. That's the moon. That's the moon. Okay, uh, question three. At which moon position could a solar eclipse be seen from Earth? And so a solar eclipse, again, that would be where the sun gets blocked out by the moon. So you need it to be, the order has to be sun, moon, Earth. Okay, so that would be position M1. Choice one is the answer for number three. Okay, why don't you go eat? Okay, with mommy. Go see what, go see what mommy got, all right? And I'll be right there. All right then, sorry. Okay. Uh, question number four. And an observer at location A on Earth views the moon when it is at position M3. Which phase of the moon will the observer see? Now, if you look from the picture here, if you look in the picture, you can see that the lit half of the moon is what's facing the Earth, okay, in position M3. And so that would be a full moon then, choice three. Okay, uh, number five, the same side of the moon always faces Earth because three, the moon rotates once as it completes one revolution around the Earth. If you remember, I told you uh, the period of revolution for the moon around the Earth is 27.3 days, but also the period of rotation for the moon is 27.3 days. So because they're equal, the amount of time for a rotation uh, and a revolution, that's why the same side always faces Earth. Number six, the passage of the moon into Earth's shadow causes a lunar eclipse. All right, um, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Number seven, what's represented by this diagram? Uh, so according to the key, the sun is that, that bright patch in the back, and then the dark body moving in front of it is the moon. So that would be an example of an eclipse of the sun, choice three. Okay, so let's see the next one. Number, this is number eight. Uh, at which two positions of the moon is an eclipse of the sun or moon possible, although not likely? Um, the two positions would be one and five. Okay, remember you need them all to be lined up. So the sun, moon, earth all have to be in a line. And that's what happens at position one or five. Um, Number nine, the new moon phase occurs when the moon is positioned between the Earth and the Sun. You having fun, Emma? Yeah. However, these positions don't always cause an eclipse of the Sun because why? Um, this is because the moon's orbit is tilted relative to the Earth's orbit. Okay, that's why you don't get an eclipse every single time it's in position one and five. Because remember what I said in last night's video, um, the moon as it goes around is usually above or below the Sun. Um, being Earth, okay? Uh, what are we up to? Number 11. Which motion causes the apparent rising and setting of the moon each day as seen from a location in Kansas? That would be, that would be Earth's rotation. Yeah, you go eat dinner. I'll be right there, okay? Okay, the Earth's uh, rotation. That's what causes the rising and setting of the moon. Number 11. The diagram shows the position of the moon as it revolves around the Earth. When viewed from the Earth, which phase of the moon will be seen when the moon is at position E? Okay, so that would be a full moon. All right, and that's it for that handout. Whew, all right. Nope, I still have to talk about tides. Okay, so the, I guess the aim here for this lesson then would be, um, why do tides occur? And so this is what you're gonna do with your uh, classwork uh, tomorrow, November 16th, okay?
Um, and so what I have to say is, first off, what are tides? Um, tides are the, the twice daily rise and fall of, of sea level. Okay, so I don't know if you've ever seen um, like a dock or you know like a pier out on the water um, at, the, at the ocean or maybe even a boat that um, where you can see the water go up and down on the side of, of one of these things. With a bo in the case of the boats, sometimes in extreme places where the tide changes a lot, the water level changes a lot, the boat one time of the day might be on dry land and then hours later it's back in water again because the tide has risen. So that would be an extreme case. Um, but that's what tides are. And what causes tides? It's the gravitational pull of the moon on the Earth's water. Um, the sun has a little bit of effect, but not nearly as much as the moon does. And I don't know if you can think about why the moon would have more influence on Earth's water and the tides than the sun. Um, but the answer is because the moon is so much closer. Remember a while back, a couple of videos ago, I told you two things affect the amount of gravity. Uh, the gravitational force. It's the size and the distance uh, between two objects. So in this case, the distance between the moon and the water on Earth is much closer than between the sun and the water on Earth. The sun is really big, but the moon is much closer, so the moon has more influence. But the sun does have a little bit extra uh, pull on the water. And we're going to see in a little while that that